Thank you so much for watching KVU News at 10. I'm Quita Cole Pepper. And I'm Brian Mays. We begin tonight with breaking news out of South Austin. Police on the scene of a SWAT call tonight. Just a few minutes ago, law enforcement held a briefing saying it started with a short vehicle pursuit involving a wanted suspect. The suspect got away for a little bit, but wasn't far away. Um, officers then witnessed the person go into um, a house here behind us. Uh, barricaded himself in and wouldn't come out, and that's why SWAT was called out. And we will be sure to keep you updated on this situation as we continue to learn more on air and on our website, kview.com. Also tonight, emergency crews spent hours today looking for an eight year old boy who fell off the back of a boat on Lake Travis this afternoon. He was not wearing a life jacket. First responders quickly moved from rescue efforts to what they're now calling a recovery mission. KVU Sports Sanders is hearing more from neighbors and more about what we know so far. As soon as I found out I was a child, it just it just made me sick. And I just immediately started praying for that family. The reaction from multiple neighbors like Kristen Miller after an eight year old boy went missing in Lake Travis. Officials with ESD one in Lago Vista said the eight year old fell off a boat and he wasn't wearing a life vest. A spokesperson for the Travis County Sheriff's Office, now the lead agency on this search, said they responded just after 2 p.m. Monday afternoon. I could tell that they were obviously looking for somebody that was missing because a couple of police officers took off on foot all down here in front of the pool area and then some others got in their car and then left. But I didn't know what was happening. I just knew that something somebody was missing. It was at the boat ramp here at the lakeside at Tessera on Lake Travis neighborhood where that rescue mission took place. It was about 40 minutes of first responders looking for this eight year old child, but after they couldn't locate him, they had to switch that over to what is now a recovery mission. Miller saying an accident like this is one her neighborhood will feel for a long time, holding on to her eight year old nephew extra tight tonight. We just finished a week at the uh, Lake Sam Rayburn with all of our family and you know, I just kept telling kids what you have to have your life jacket on. You have to have your life jacket on because it's just uh, accidents happen. As of now, first responders say this is still a recovery mission as they search for this young boy in Lago Vista. I'm Ford Sanders. Thank you, Ford, and making headlines tonight across the Lone Star State. A Houston man who disappeared eight years ago while walking his dog was found this past week outside a church on the city's southeast side. Rudy Farias was 17 when he went missing in 2015, and on Thursday he was found just 25 minutes from where he was last seen. Family members say there are still so many questions because he was found with numerous cuts and bruises on his body. In a statement, his mother said a good Samaritan found him unresponsive outside the church and called 911. She said he's currently nonverbal and not able to communicate with them. As you can imagine, the family and those close to the investigation are so happy to hear he was found. Tom Miller, the founder of Texas EquiSearch, has been one of the many that helped look for Farias from the very beginning. When he was found, it was a huge shock. It was unbelievable. And, uh, and thank God he's alive. I mean, this is one of the miracles that you don't experience very often. And, and you know, we've all been blessed to, to experience. I think now there's, uh, I think right now there's quite a lot more questions than there are answers. The Houston Police Department plans to speak with Farias and his family on Wednesday to see if they can figure out where he's been all this time. The dangerous heat wave this month is creating a public health crisis. Experts say it's particularly affecting older people. The Webb County Medical Examiner says nine people have been pronounced dead because of the heat. She's now begging the public to take precautions. Dr. Corrine Stern told the Texas Tribune that all nine deaths were completely preventable. Stern said in each case she heard family and friends recount how their loved ones claimed they'd be okay because they'd endured the heat before. In Hidalgo County, the health authority there says between 15 and 20 percent of people taken to the emergency rooms after suffering from heat exhaustion and other complications related to the high temperatures there. The heat in our area, no different here. Chief Meteorologist Hunter Williams joins us now with an update on the forecast. Hunter. 
Yeah, Brian Quita, fortunately, we've gotten at least a couple of days where it's still hot, but at least temperatures have stayed in the mid to upper 90s. That's going to continue for a few more days, but I do see triple digit heat returning as we get into this weekend. Let's talk about the holiday forecast, though. Right now it is all quiet outside. It's just warm. Temperature is 86 in Austin. We did have a couple of isolated showers and storms make it into parts of Fayette, Lee and Bastrop counties. Those have all dissipated and the rest of tonight is going to be dry. Fireworks forecast tomorrow the afternoon 97 a mix of clouds and sunshine temperatures falling through the 80s during the evening hours just about completely dry, but I can't completely rule out a widely isolated storm. I'll leave us at 10% through the evening, but for the most part, fireworks ceremonies should be completely fine. Again, 97 tomorrow, 98 Wednesday, same number on Thursday, but look about this. Look at the storm chances. This will we'll talk about coming up in the full forecast isolated storms Wednesday. A 30% chance for scattered storms on Thursday. Hopefully we can get some beneficial rain out of it. We'll time it out for you coming up in a few minutes. Thanks a lot, Hunter. After working for Williamson County for three years, an administrator says she was fired after hanging a pride poster in her office. She tells KVU's Derenisha Heron she believes it all comes down to discrimination. Carmen Baez's personality is as bright as her accessories. They made me the face of facilities because of my bubbly personality. But she says the job that lifted her up in June, Pride Month, dimmed her light during a month of celebration. Correct. Baez says she put this Pride Inclusivity poster on her office wall while working as an administrator at Williamson County facilities. And two days later, told that I was terminated uh, effective immediately because of the um, tax dollars being used. Tax dollars used to laminate one poster to go into this already colorful office. She said her supervisor made her take it down the day she put it up on June 14th. He stated out loud that Williamson County facilities is inclusive, but we don't need to show it. And he said that I should be happy with the little colors that he does allow me in my office because he can take it down at any moment and change it all to black and white. Baez is firing is everything but black and white. She said back in 2021, she received verbal warnings for being late following her recovery from surgery. And that was also listed as a reason for her termination. We've seen a pretty good uptick in cases that involve the LGBTQ plus community. Employment lawyer Dan Ross says the uptick happened in 2020 after the Supreme Court ruled the federal ban on discrimination based on sex applies to the LGBTQ plus community. Ross says Baez has a strong case. So even if she couldn't prove discrimination, she may be able to prove that during the period of time where they made her take down the poster and the time she was fired that that they violated her right to free speech. Baez knows it's going to be a long fight, but she says it's worth it to keep her and others light bright. Going against them is something that I'm terrified of internally, but I know that if nobody speaks up, what's gonna be resolved? But who you love doesn't reflect on the job you do. Carmen says she put in a request for an interview with the EEOC and is currently looking for a lawyer. LULAC, an organization that fights to protect civil rights, is also backing her in this fight. A Williamson County spokesperson says they do not comment on employment matters. Here's your news flash recapping Monday's other headlines. The body of missing 69-year-old Sandra Burton was found in North Austin back on Friday. She was last seen walking near Clayton Lane on Wednesday of last week. The case not being investigated as a homicide. Family confirmed to KVU she was in a care facility when she went missing. Austin police are searching for 24-year-old Ricarlos Hall, who they believe was involved in a deadly shooting last night. It happened just after 6.30 at a park in Northeast Austin. A reward of up to $1,000 may be available for any information. The second bus of migrants from Texas has arrived in Los Angeles, California. The bus from Brownsville transported 41 migrants, including 11 children. The first bus to L.A. was sent back on June 14th. Since the spring, Governor Abbott has sent over 21,000 migrants to sanctuary cities.
According to the TSA, from Thursday to Sunday, agents screened nearly 10.7 million travelers. About 129,000 of those passengers were screened at Austin's airport. The airport had its second busiest day ever on Friday. The Austin skyline continues to change. This time, plans are in the works for two new towers near West Campus. And of course, tomorrow, the 4th of July, that means many people will be firing up the grill. Some tips on how to keep things safe coming up.